There are some uh, things to consider here. The, um, that's the ability of the laser to cut holes in, in where they're supposed to go. I will tell you honestly that when you have large cuts on a stencil, there is an expansion in, in the stencil during the cutting. And I'm going to tell you honestly that the stencil could most likely be almost a mil large. Still, that's better tolerance than anything else there. So, my, uh, my hope is that in order to make sure that you're happy, because the process engineers, you guys, are, you guys are the customers. We have to make you happy. In order to make you happy, you have to have a stencil that prints on the pads. And you have to have a stencil that releases the paste where you put it. Hopefully, two little insights give you a, a little bit of clue of uh, how um, far we can as do the stencil is concerned. The ability of the stencil they, to cut over a 22 inch area and if you're not taking out a whole chunk of metal out of one area, each individual section that you put on there shouldn't be any problem. Are you seeing problems? No, I just yeah, I don't think that it would be any problems. Other than the stencil house will say, ah, oh, man, why doesn't he order two? You know, he's getting three stencils for the price of one. And it's worse, I'll tell you honestly, is if you get these, you get these files from three different customers and they're not related at all and one is done in PCAD and we have to manually insert the apertures and another one's in uh, uh, ODB++, which we all hate. Um, other than our comments on the side that you'll never hear, no problem. <laughs> David, I didn't. Um, you know, these guys have pushed, have been presenting this to me at uh, conventions for many years saying, oh, it's so wonderful because you have one set of data that contains your assembly drawings, your fab drawings, your component list, your uh, centroid data, your stencil data. You can fabricate a board and they're all guaranteed to be the same rev. Bull hockey. I've had many where the stencil file is different from the rest of the board. I have another thing that actually, before we get to the next question, when I went back to your inputs, if you guys send the stencil house, the paste layers, of course, the silk screen layers, the solder mask layers, and the external trace layers, we load all those up. Have you ever had the instance where you get the stencil back and there's a part missing? Stupid stencil house, my part's missing. You didn't print it. Oh, guess what? It's, it's not on the paste layer. The pad stack doesn't include that part. They added it later. Not necessarily saying we're going to catch them all, but if you send all those layers, we load them all up. And they're all in different colors. And so we could see, oh, they don't come white. Look, there's that, that's a surface mount part, and it doesn't come, show up white. You know, it's only red or green or cyan or whatever at least give, we may be able to help you there so sorry aside next question oh, oh sorry wayne oh wayne i talked to you oh yeah nice for you to show up from like a board design standpoint the diversity of components on there when would i want to consider going away from laser to an electro form or one um do you know how electroform stencils are made? Okay. And you know how laser cut stencils are made. I, I will sell you an electroform stencil. No problem. I like it because I get more money from you. Is it better? That's my question. No. no. I will t the electroform stencils, when you put it on the mandrel and you're turning that thing to try and get the nickel all into the different apertures, the more complex and whatnot, the finer aperture areas that you have, that stencil, all these internet presentations and 
Maybe the other presenters are going to say the same thing, that you get better release on electroform stencil. It's because it's thinner. It's thinner. It's not a uniform thickness. And the more dense an area is, the thinner it'll be. So if, yeah, you have an order of four mil stencil, it's only three and a half mils where your uh, micro BGA area is in the middle of these QFPs, it's thinner. Are you going to get better release? Yeah, if you got a three and a half mil stencil as opposed to a four. Slide with the yeah, you will. So you can order an electroform, we'll make it. I'm not biased or anything. But. It's more than double on electroform, but and it takes longer. It takes longer, costs more. That's that's standard, right? Do you have to get extra pieces into a pad or into a barrel? I have a, a, a two hole part that is surface mount. And we don't have enough room on. We have enough room on the board, and we're trying to figure a way to add more of a paste trail, so it can flow into the hole to complete a set to give us a more uniform, solid hole. Is there a formula to say, hey, my barrel is this big by this big? There actually, there actually is a formula. It was published, I don't know, 1992 or something like that. I do have that. If you send me an email, I'll, uh, I'll forward that to you. But usually when you're doing pin and paste uh, application, you can dramatically overprint the opening. You can go beyond the solder mask well right. and still have it pull back and flow down the, the I've barrel. Had, I've had it go up to three to four millimeters from the center of the hole and flow back in. But this is a one millimeter hole. Uh, and you want to get further down the hole is your right because right. the board is about two millimeters, two and a half millimeters yeah. thick. And what's happening is you know you need to get at least 75 percent but we want more than that. We want so we're thinking about putting solder preforms the, the the bricks. Yeah. But they're so expensive yeah. so if we just add a little bit more solder will that um Am I, can you repeat the question so oh I'm sorry <laughs> Chuck is asking, uh, basically, he wants to get more paste in a pin and paste uh, application down the barrel of the, the drilled hole. Correct? Okay. Uh, depending on your, your room that you have, uh, I know that some other presenter probably can offer you another solution, but what you can do is add Kapton tape right around the component on the bottom side of the stencil. That will raise the stencil up you get more paste down the hole. Have you tried that? I've tried, you've tried I've, that. I've tried um, more than one print. You know, a double, you've tried, mo tried double print, yeah. Printing it four times with a double swipe, and the paste only gets about halfway down the barrel, so that's why I wanted to add more. But I didn't know if there was a safe or if there was a, um, a way to figure how much paste you actually need. So if you have a one inch barrel, you need Two inches wide by four inches. Yeah, so. like a, I, I do have a spreadsheet formula for that. Um, I copied from some magazine a long, long time ago. Uh, I can give you that. I don't. The, whether or not it works, closest I ever came to printing a board is uh, back in the early '90s when I did printed. Cir I was taking a printed circuit design class, and we went to a board house. And back those days, they were manually printing, so I got to print a silk screen on a board. That's the most printing I've done. <laughs> so, uh, I'll send you the formula and hopefully it helps. Or there's, there's, there's two different ways you can do it. Uh, mo a, lot of, a lot of the problems with ground pads in the middle of uh, smaller components like LCDs, or something that's very light, is that amount of paste that's put in the ground pad will actually cause the component to ride above the, because uh, it doesn't have feet, right? It's leadless. And when you go through reflow, it can churn and whatnot. So, this, this one has, this okay. okay. Let me finish my point, then I'll answer your question. <laughs> so, in those cases, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, David interrupted. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, what we do 
automatically in those cases is we reduce the ground pad 20%. And then depending on its size, we'll chop it up, window, window paint it. Um, so they would do that. In your particular case, provided you've given me the, the either component layer or the uh, solder mask, we, and you don't want to put pads, you don't want to put paste in the vias? Is what you're saying? Oh, you want to put paste in the vias. But we're concerned about getting solder balls into the component because it's open lead on the bottom, and like I said, there's a hole on the top. It's a sensor part. Mm. So it actually, you know, in the, the field, it takes liquid. And I think you'd have, well, you probably already experimented with different designs on the uh, holes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the Gerber, I, again, I don't know what the solution is, but I know with this, if I have all the Gerber information, I can manipulate it so that you only put paste on the via holes. I can go around the via holes. We can make an opening you know, to experiment as to what will give you enough paste on the via so that it goes through but not all the way through the board. That's your problem, right? So, so we, like I said, currently we're getting boards we conducted, I mean, not conducted, but Yeah. That's the way that's what Yeah. Strange how they're that way, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Bill? Yeah. Hi, Bill. We've got a similar situation. Oh, good. Shall not be named yeah. later. We came, up, we, we came up with a, a, a unique design that fit that particular application that does do certain geometries that you can do with your foil. You take a high risk of a snag or something like that, damaging the stencil with some of the geometries that you can use. But we've been building that board for about a year and a half. Haven't snagged the stencil yet with it. And it's, it's not a big board, it's not a high complex board this particular application crazy. So you can do it with geometries to try and get around it with the stencil. Yeah. And, have to do it. and you may have to limit your print speeds, pressures, things like that, different than what you would normally do. So is your uh, stencil uh, aperture bigger than the old? Um, slightly. Slightly. Uh, this is just off the cuff, maybe two mils larger. Than what we've done is we've kind of done some, some rain suspension with that and gone around that. So it's very thin, um, maybe three, four mils worth of support for a ring mm -hmm. that's around each one of the apertures. Ours. Holding it right. with three spokes? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's probably, I think on ours is about 24 apertures. So, and, it, and it took, you know, several trial and error things yeah. before we were able to get what we wanted with it. Yeah. Um, the stencil house worked with us, it gave us limits as to what we could do with supports on it, and it works pretty well. well. Our problem, we used to get solder balls on the bottom side of the board, and we just kept working with it until we didn't get it. We ran enough uh, DOE on it to where we were comfortable, and we weren't going to see it. Next. Oh, I'm sorry. Recently, we switched from standard stainless steel stencils to a PhD material. Mm -hmm. We are seeing better reliefs, better aperture wall uh, finish. Is that something you would recommend? Uh, yeah, we only use the PhD material. Yeah. Um, yeah, not entirely. For the four, five, six, eight mil stencils that are common, yes. You can't get that for 10 mil, 12 mil, 20 mil material. Can't even get it for two mil yet. Uh, yeah, the, the pH material, it's, uh, the gentleman actually came to see me after a show in 2002 when they were first developing it. And the material is formulated specifically for laser cut application in that it has a better ability to dissipate the heat 
because the laser, even though it's a light source, there is heat generated when you're cutting apertures. And especially when you have a number of cuts in a small area, uh, you can get the tin can type of uh, reaction from the laser. Um, so yeah, the pH material is awesome. It is very good. Is there a price difference for that? Uh, to you guys, no. No, there is to us, but you know, again, uh, no. Uh, don't. It, it, it is a, a, a 302, 304 stainless steel that's uh, been, uh, they've done a different way of forming it other than the standard uh, uh, cold rolled. They do a different formula, uh, formula that helps it to lay down flat instead of being coiled. Because all of, most material, if you buy stainless steel material, it comes formed in monster coils. And if you put enough heat on it, it wants to go back to its natural shape. So the PhD material was made flat and it doesn't coil when you cut away a lot of stuff from it. We, we had a census house send us several different samples of theirs, standard stainless to PhD, their electroform, and their electropolish. Mm -hmm. We actually took it under scope and we actually seen a better finish, area finish on the PhD than we did the electroform yeah. or electropolish. Yeah. It's uh, true. Thank you. What's your name? Stephen. Stephen. I'll use the next time I have to speak, I'm going to call Steve. <laughs>